Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Achimata Forest remains the biggest tract of prime land and ecology in the greater Accra region. Now, many of us may not be die in the wool environmental lovers, but at least one thing is certain. We do know that uh, protecting forests is critical. Now, you know, according to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, Ghana is one of the tropical countries with the highest percentage of rainforest loss in the world. Ghana's current forest cover stands at 1.6 million hectares, about 4 million acres, and that is down almost 80% from 8 Point two million hectares. That's what we started off with in 1900. Now we are left with 1.6 million. And that's from the Ministry of uh, Lands and Natural Resources. The question is, what is government's commitment to preserving what will remain of the Achimota forest? Let's hear from the Honorable Abu Jinapur following the decision to declassify uh, the area as a forest reserve. Did indicate in the final paragraph in order to motivate the discretion of the president to give approval for us to proceed as we've done. I did indicate and I quote the ministry intends to develop the forest into an ecotourism park along the likes of Central Park in New York or Hyde Park in London. End quote. So by all intents and purposes, ab initio, we always intended to rather upgrade the Achimota forest into a forest reserve which is fit for purpose, which is befitting of Accra as the capital of our country. Achimota forest has not been sold, it's not been compromised, it will not be sold, it remains as it is. We will continue to reforest the Achimota forest and God willing, we intend to develop the Achimota forest into a true forest reserve which will serve Accra and the people of Ghana. Now, is it the case that this isn't the only issue and that this is not just about the environment, that it's about suspicions of an overt grand scheme for senior public officials to benefit from what is the last natural prime line in Accra? Now, land is always a sensitive issue in capital cities across the world where indigents always feel hard done by, pushed out, and excluded and that is why it seems this two decade long campaign by the O family has persisted let's hear from their lawyer leon john edusay requested any acreage of government what we have been doing is negotiating with government with a view of them returning land to us now at no time have we been offered 90 acres in fact i think you are referring to 90 hectares which is 194 acres, which was the original offer being made by government when we were in negotiation in some time in 2008. Since then, certain factors have come into play, which has necessitated changes along the line. And due, due to certain changes on the drug, land being taken back by government, this has brought that increment, and these are usually due to various financial and ecological regions. That's why these figures were changed. But we've never asked for a precise, a precise amount of acreage, and government has never put anything in stone, set in stone, none of the government. You know, well, we'll see, we're not going to be building concrete monstrosities there. But what would be done would be in tune with the whole green concept. We've already started planting trees there, uh, many, uh, with, uh, with, uh, what was there about 10 years ago. We are with, uh, with, our, with our bed partners, we pay, pay nearly two million garden seeds to put, start planting trees. Because if you have gone to the forest today, you will see, you yourself will see what exactly that is. So that's uh, the lawyer for the Owu family. But there are concerns about, you know, protecting that enclave and that once we declassify it, we open it up uh, to land hunters. And so should that be the reason why we uh, give the land back to the Owu family? Why not pay them uh, compensation? Because the view is that the Achimota Reserve is serving as an ecological and environmental facility. Uh, we recall how land lands along the motorway had been rezoned and returned to Alodia owners because we weren't expanding the motorway in line with what uh, that land was for. And therefore, we saw encroachments, and now we see what the impact 
is on that whole area and even the natural ecology. So what next? Um, I'm still in the studio here with the Honorable Andy Apiakubi. Uh, thank you for staying uh, with us. Uh, we will have on the uh, phone lines the Honorable Inusa Fuseni, who is a former minister for lands and natural resources on Zoom. We have Dr. Godwin Ja who is an environmental lawyer with the York University in Canada. He's a fellow of a college there. And then we have in studio as well Elvis Opong, who is the spokesperson for the Coalition of Environmental NGOs. So thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us this morning. Much thank appreciated. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So um, let me start with you, um, Mr. Opong. What for you is the reason or what is the cons um, against holding or declassifying the Achimota forest? Oh, so, so let me take this opportunity to greet your uh, valuable list, uh, listeners. Now, so you know this is not the first time this Achimota uh, discussion has popped out. When it started first, a lot of people made a, a, a case for why we think they should not be declassified, and that we think those points are very relevant, especially uh, Honorable Osafu Mafu gave reasons why he thinks those days that he, why he thinks uh, the, the forest reserve should not be disclassified. And I think just recently, Kobane Japon, the former general secretary for MPP, and we all know that he, he's also an environmental uh, engineer. He's an engineer, yeah, but exactly. uh, not an environmental engineer, but he's an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he has also made a, 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 a reason why he thinks the forest reserve should not be disclassified. And, it's very, and, and whatever he said for us, we think is very true. You know, Achimota Forest Reserve happens to be the only green belt we have in Greater Accra. And that green belt serves a very important purpose. It's not just by coincidence that you realize that when flooding happens in Accra, most part of Accra, you don't see flooding in that part of the country, or that part of Accra. It's because of the role that the forest played. In most part of Accra, we have just cemented the area, so when the rain falls, it all comes back to the streets and it, it leads to flooding. But because of that part of Accra, the Achimota forest and the size of the land, when the water falls, the, the forest tries to absorb the most, most part of the water that flows. So it's, it reduces the possibility of flooding happening in that area. Apart from Achimota forest trying to reduce flooding, one critical important that forest play Back at secondary school in Achimota, we, 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 we were told about how the functions of tree, when tree absorbed uh, carbon dioxide and breathed out oxygen. Accra is a very polluted uh, a city. We have a lot of industries, we have a lot of cars, and we pollute the atmosphere so much. And it's the function of the trees that absorb those dangerous chemicals that we put in the atmosphere. And like I said, Accra, the only one that we have is Achimota Forest. For us, we even think we need to have more of Achimota-like in some part of Accra because the kind of chemicals that we are releasing to the atmosphere, Achimota Forest alone cannot even contain it. But at least it's playing its role as it needs to do. Once that we try to reduce the size of Achimota Forest, we are expecting more carbon dioxide to be in the atmosphere. We all know the science people will tell you the consequences of when these uh, uh, chemicals are in the atmosphere. That's the reason why we, we think it does not make sense for us to, re, uh, 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 re, to reduce the size of Achimota forest. Apart from that, one consequence that we are overlooking as people is the consequences of declassifying Achimota forest in forest management in Ghana. We believe that if the, the President's EI stands, it will lead to chaos in forest management in Ghana. So this is, apart from what may happen at the Achimota Forest, there might be the risk of other forest reserves mm -hmm. coming under attack. Exactly. That's your concern. Exactly. Okay. exactly. For, but hasn't that already happened? We have, a, we have a Tiwa forest that, you know, there's a lot of encroachment. You go to the western region, you see a lot of uh, felling for Galamse and also for, for timber. The same in Ashanti. There's still lots of forest cover, but there are threats. No, so so it, will, it, will, it will move from just encroachment to people trying to demand the land for other purposes. Let, let me try to set the basis for people to understand this. There are two major ways how land are acquired for, 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 for certain forest reserve. 
The first process is when government need a land for forest reserve, government can look, government can talk to the, the landowners and, and compensate them and take the land for, uh, for, for forest purposes. In that sense, the land belongs to the state and the state manages it. There are other ways whereby government acquire the land without paying compensation, which the law allows. I think CAP 157. It allows that governments acquire the land without paying for compensation. But government money the land for, 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 the, for the people, for, for the people. And when there is a, a revenue out of it, government pays royalties to, so when you go to most part of the Western Eastern region, that's why when they, they, they cut down timber trees, government pay royalties to the people. When you listen to the Atimota discussion from the press statement, from the EI, it gives you the indication that in 1921, when we acquired the, the land from, from the, the, pay, uh, from the, the, the family, family. We, we paid compensation. 4,000 so, pounds. Exactly. So for that one, it's settled. But in 1927, from the minister, we did not pay compensation. At least there was no evidence or receipt of payment of uh, compensation. And I think the family lawyer also did mention that they did not pay compensation. So what it means is that the second part falls into the category of forest reserve, whereby government managed that portion of the forest for the people without paying compensation, which is allowed. This kind of category of forest reserve is made up of more than 80% of the forest reserve that we have. More than 80% of the forest reserve that we have in Ghana here are managed by government for the people without paying compensation. But they are not all in the capital city. And you and I know that historically, capital cities tend to suffer. Indigents of capital cities always get pushed out because of it's the capital is hosting government uh, facilities and all that. Everyone is coming to the capital city to seek their fortune, build a better life. So these other forests, they are not in the capital city. So, 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 so that's where the problem is. When you go to, we have, worked, we have worked with communities for quite a long time. When you go to these communities, they will tell you that they, 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 are, they, are, they, they have expanded a lot. For the time that the forest reserve was, the land was taken away from them for forest reserve purposes, it was 1920s thereabouts. They have expanded. They need also some portion of the forest reserve to do their things. So that's where our fear is. What, and especially the reason that the president gave to uh, declassify the forest reserve, it did mention two things. The first one is because the land has been encroached. Two, because we did not pay compensation. So that's where uh, uh, the danger is. The point is about 80% to 90% of the forest reserve we have in Ghana here. We, d we haven't paid compensation because the law allows that. And like you have already said, most of them too have also been encroached. Are we not opening the floodgates for those people to also demand that because our forest reserve have been encroached and because compensation have also not been paid, we are also demanding portion of the forest reserve for other developmental projects to, to plant cocoa, to build houses and do other things. And we think it's, it will be a very dangerous precedent for the president to set. Okay. Let me hold you there and bring in the Honorable uh, Apia Kubi, who is... Uh, 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 there, there is an issue that my friend is raising yeah. about non-payment of compensation yeah. in respect of the 1927 mm, acquisition. Yes. I want us to, if we can, you know, permission, go to Honorable Inusa we'll, we'll get to him. Um, we'll get to him. Because if that is the situation, our rendition will be we'll different. Be different. Okay. But, but if compensation but the has been paid, okay. uh, then we will also well, the old traverse family, carefully the old along family the line. insists that compensation so hasn't been paid. that is why paid I then. want to... And, and, okay, and, and, but and, I need... And hold on. And, oh, just hold on, Mr. Paul. So, Honorable uh, Apiago, the question is, why now? Why do this now? Well, it's been 20 years this okay. thing came to former President Kufo. It wasn't handed over. It went to Professor Mills. Nothing. Why now? You see, uh, my friend was uh, talking about two modes of acquisition for government in respect of land. And one is the vested land. And it's covered by the law, uh, which has hitherto been repealed by the Constitution Article 268. Uh, 267, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and also, the other one is acquisition. They are two different modes, and they come with two different uh, legal uh, perspectives. One of them, uh, acquisition uh, by uh, government, means that all pre acquisition rights extinguished pursuant to acquisition and pursuant to payment of compensation uh, at the time. And there is a very critical case uh, that the Supreme Court did in 
Nita Tachube says, Attorney General, who talks about uh, acquisition, and he says that when your uh, land is acquired by government, you lose all rights pre existing. Uh, and uh, the, the decision in uh, Chete Chiru also says that it affects land pursuant to the promulgation of uh, the 1992 constitution. It doesn't have retrospective application, uh, which is also in another legal uh, realm. But uh, this land that we are talking about, we need to um, uh, establish whether it is a vested land or an acquired land. In the case of the 1921 acquisition, uh, I think uh, there is no doubt as to its character because uh, and it's confirmed by both parties that compensation was paid. But uh, the question I want to be answered is whether or not the £4,000 £4, payment in respect of compensation was to cover both acquisitions or they are in different um, legal realms and therefore come under legal, uh, two dif different legal uh, uh, expectations. Now, uh, if Minister answers that question, because I am privy to discussion with him when he said that the payment was in respect of the two. So if that is the case, then the whole family has no case whatsoever. And uh, people talk of compensation. If it had been paid, then why raise compensation? And the laws of the land are that uh, if the law is, if the land is acquired, uh, you lose all rights. And then uh, there is a case in point, Margaret J versus Attorney General, uh, which happened in 2014, and uh, under EI 108, and the, the, that uh, executive instrument sought to acquire Tema and Accra lands. I'm sure it's uh, under vesting. And uh, there was this uh, lady, the uh, appellant, who happened to have a land within that enclave had been given by a stool before the uh, promulgation of the executive instrument. And the court says that that was a pre-acquired interest which cannot be subsumed under the EI uh, uh, 108 because at the point of the promulgation of the EI 108, uh, the subject matter was stool land. And at that point, uh, that land, particular land of that applicant was not to land, for which reason it could not come under that acquisition, and therefore she was entitled to her land. Pursuant to that, there were also the case of uh, Saka and the, the Harley, uh, uh, 2000, uh, 1984, 86 Supreme Court decision, and it says, it confirms that. Then the case of, uh, another case comes, uh, Madame Sego versus uh, Snit, and the Supreme Court says that um, when land is acquired, no matter what time of the acquisition, it covers all. But I think the difference between the two is that this uh, instrument purported to attack all lands, and this one purported to attack two lands. So the difference is that the woman was saying that my land is not stool land because at the time of publication, it was personal land, not stool land. But in the case of uh, Sego, the court says that irrespective of time frame, once the subject matter, the description and the memorandum talks about a particular land that cannot be excluded from its description, then it means that uh, you will lose it. Okay. Subject so, to payment of compensation. So, so there are these varied approaches. Let me bring in the Honorable Inusa Fusini yes, so that important. we can just speak about the speak 1927 about acquisition because I think the 1921 acquisition there's is no common doubt. knowledge. There's, a, there's an old archival uh -huh. photo mm -hmm. of the payment of £4,000. Honorable... When uh, we get that then we will deal with it as it is. <laughs> All right. uh -huh. Honorable Inusa Fusain is a former minister for lands and natural resources. And it was also while he was in office that this issue came up. Thank you very much, Honorable Fuseini, for joining us this morning on TV3 and 3FM's Key Points. Good morning. And let me say uh, good morning to your uh, panelists and my co-contributors. Uh,
Thank you. So tell us, was compensation paid to the old family at all for the 1927 acquisition? That's the second acquisition. Well, the old family is now contending that compensation was not paid to them for the 1927 acquisition. For me, sitting as minister, I was convinced that... Comp oh, sorry, sorry. Hello? What's okay, unfortunately, we seem to have lost Honorable Fuseni. We'll try and get that, him that information back. Is very yeah, but let me now speak with uh, Dr. Godwin Ja. Dr. Godwin Ja is um, an env environmental lawyer, and he's a fellow with York University in Canada. Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Ja. Thanks for uh, joining us. There's been a lot of concern, nonetheless, about this declassification there's a view that the large tracts of the achimota forest will remain intact it's only a portion of it which have been identified and when journalists visited the forest during the week they were shown the area it is uh, a large tract of land bordering offices of the forestry commission which is opposite the n1 so you will see the DSTV offices on the other side of the N1. It is that portion of or tract of land all the way down into Abofu that we are told is handed them. That's one portion that I'm aware of. So now that you know, does this change anything for us? Um, thank you very much, Jifa. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, clear. loud and clear. Thank you. Right. Um, Good morning to your viewers and listeners, and good morning to the co-panelists in the in the studio and the Honorable Fuseni. Um, I would have wished that the minister had spoken before mm -hmm. I proceeded, yes. but uh, we'll take it that, um, according to his point, he made the the lands where I've been paid for at least that's where he left off. On only, no, only the nineteen twenty one acquisition is certain. The 1927 one is not. That is what you will say. Okay, we would even come to that. But generally, we understand that um, with regards to the acquisition of public lands, and in this context, the Ashimoto lands, the the character of those lands remain a public uh, for public purpose. And I think that the that should be the overriding point that we need to address in our discussions. And, and I'm happy that Elvis flagged that point in his preliminary comments. Um, when we look at the EI-144 and we look at the, the shadow and we look at the lands that are being affected, the descriptions that followed in the minister's uh, press conference um, subsequent to the, um, the breaking news uh, was to suggest that the lands that are being declassified, at least using the, the descriptions that he, he uses, are peripheral lands. Um, that in itself connotes a lot of uh, dangerous um, um, elements for the sound ecological management of the Ashmoto Forest. Now, for starters, there is a point that we need to make here that a forest reserve, and especially in the character of that, the, the Ashmoto Forest Reserve, serves three purposes um, for research purposes, for recreation and for environmental or ecological purposes. All these three are of public um, yes. dimensions. Now, the, to the main issue at hand, when we look at the definition of what, they call, what the minister refers to as peripheral lands, it, it, it takes away the character of buffers. You know, for every forest reserve or for every ecological zone, there's supposed to be buffers around that because the ecological conditions of the forest or the area require some level of extra protection. And so to take away those um, lands under the guise or under the description of peripheral areas suggests that they are not relevant to the um, healthy ecosystem management of the Ashimoto forest in itself. That I think is something that we need to address um, upfront that Absolutely. we cannot describe them as um, peripheral zones because they're actually integral to but the ecosystem 
of the area. And we'll come shortly to some of the, the, the key markers of why we cannot describe them as peripheral areas. All right, let's um, speak to the Honorable Inusa yes. Fusaini now. Hopefully his line will be more stable. Uh, Honorable Fusaini, sorry the line dropped a moment ago. Uh, I hope you can hear us clearly. I can hear you clearly here. Great. So you were telling us about the 1927 acquisition or not? Yes, so I said that when I was in office, I had enough information before me to suggest that the compensation was paid for the 1921 and 1927 acquisitions. And that when the OU family appeared before the uh, Alfaradati Committee, it was not on the basis of compensation payment, but it was on the basis of land being returned to them because of the tremendous sacrifices they had made for releasing their land, their family land, for the establishment of the Achimota School and the Achimota Forest. The Achimota Forest itself was constituted into a forest in 1930. So the acquisitions had completed before the forest was established. And so it would be, I mean, <laughs> it would be news I mean, to me uh, for anybody to say that a colonial government would pay compensation for a 1921 acquisition and not, not pay compensation for a 1927 acquisition. Five years in between. So, with that in mind, they say that government has not used the land for what they said it would be used for, and hence the land should be returned to them. What's the other opportunity to not do that? Because I think the view for many is that why now? You know, so the what's the, the option? Government, the government has been using the land for the intended purpose. The 1927 acquisition that was largely constituted into a forest reserve is basically to provide wood for the Achimota School. But we have moved on. We are in modern Ghana. We now use gas. We use electricity. But the wood, to be able to continue to provide wood, you needed to maintain a forest. That was why in 1930, that acquisition was constituted into a forest. And it is still used as a forest. In fact, today we have even a better use for the forest. That forest serves as a carbon sink for Accra. In fact, it's the lungs of the whole of Accra. And so, if you take away the forest, you increase the carbon dioxide in the air because there will not be a carbon sink. It serves to balance the ecological I mean, a, a, a area, the atmospheric conditions of the area. It also says that there has a laboratory, a collection of species of trees that cannot be found anywhere within the princess of Accra. It has exotic butterflies and creeping reptiles that probably you will not see unless you go to a, long, I mean, a far away place. That tree, that uh, Akimota forest now says a better use than even it was earlier conceived. Mm. And so there is every reason to protect the forest. It's every reason. The, 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 the minister, the Honorable um, Samola Bujinapo, insists that the fact that there's been the declassification does not mean that people have sold the forest or people are buying the forest. So, what he says so when is you that... When you, de when you de declassify 245 acres of the Achimota forest, in addition to the 118 acres that was granted under the, the S.Y. John Dramat Mama administration, it brings the total number of acreage that will be defoliated, that would be robbed of the forest, to 361.5. That's huge. That's about 40% of the forest. If you take away 40% of the forest, what do you think you are doing to the ecological integrity of the area? Okay, so let me ask though, the minister says there are portions that have already been leased out to people, they have documents on it. However, they cannot develop the area because of the 
classification as a forest reserve. Hence, the need to declassify it to allow those with their legitimate lease to develop it. Meanwhile, the larger portion of the forest will remain a forest enclave. That is what the plan is. The, the minister also no, indicated no, that the no, ecological, the eco park will not happen because they are not convinced of it. Yeah, so Ghanaians are feeling a righteous indignation because nobody knows what they are going to put the forest, what to what use they are going to put the forest. And that is why they are willing to give out more than 200 acres of the land to the Owo family. I mean, if a forest is lying fallow, uh, you, you might as well uh, uh, dissipate it. And that's what they have done. Nature abhors a vacuum. So irrespective of the ecological importance of the forest, they are willing to give out 245 acres of that land. Even Kofo did not give out that amount of land. Kofo had entered a memorandum of understanding with the old family to give them 193, and this is scaled it down to 118. And this is what the present administration has tripled it, oh, has made it 361.5. Okay. Now, so for me, the, the issue comes down to really. Why the opposition? Why the reversal? All right. That's why Ghanaians are right to be skeptical. Why Is it about a, an inordinate determination on the part of this administration uh, to grab land? Is it, were we going back to the pre-2009 days when the uh, uh, International Students Hostel was pulled down and partitioned and allocated? When the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs was taken over, when cantonment lands were sold to uh, persons close to the party, is that what we are coming back to? Nobody knows. But um, at least it sounds like that. It looks like that. Because if the first MPP administration under Kofo had decided, it was all the petitions submitted to them, that what the Owo family was entitled to was 193. So if for nothing at all, and you wanted to revise what the NDC had done by scaling it down to 118, uh, what you could do, I mean, to the, to the best of intentions, was probably to up it to the what Kofo had said, that give them 193. Today there is no Kofo, it's not NDC. It's 245 acres in addition to what was granted. All right. Uh, let me come to Honorable Apiakubi. So yeah. the issue... Now that we are clear in our minds... Now that you are clearer... That compensation has been duly paid, now then we... The, well, the, their lawyer doesn't believe so, but I don't yeah, want to belabor not, the it point. It is not the case of his lawyer. But, they've, the taken of, a, but they've taken a different position, alternative position, which is the land is not being used for the purpose. However, assuming that without admitting that uh, uh, there is no compensation paid, that still does not negate the acquisition of the state of Ghana uh, and the, um, the development of the forest. And there is no law that says that when your land is acquired for a purpose, you have to go back and try to reclaim part of the, law, part of the land. No law says that. The law says that upon uh, uh, acquisition and payment thereof of compensation, uh, then your rights are extinguished. And the law continues to say that even where compensation has not been paid, it does not generate a right for you to claim part of that land. But you can go and claim for your compensation. Uh, we will not also forget uh, the law of limitation that says that bring your action timelessly. We won't go there. But uh, we will stand on the fact, the fact that the law says when the, law, the land is acquired for state, uh, for uh, public purpose, it remains so. Uh, we have it is moved, only, we, we moved on from there. Is, on is only, the truth is, no, 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 government I'm coming. has approved I'm, I'm coming. this. The, the point is that it is only on the uh, failure of purpose that uh, we will go into discussions as to what happens. And even there, if the failure of purpose, for the specific purpose fails, and the new use is still public interest, public use purpose, then you cannot still say that the, 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 uh, the purpose has failed. That is the decision of the true. Now, if 
that is the position of the law, upon what grounds will anybody think of giving any part of the land? I'm not interested in people talking about this EI or uh, 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 President Mahama's purported attempt to divest or President Kufo's purported attempt to divest. I'm talking about any form of uh, divesting of any part thereof, pursuant to the acquisition, which to, is lawful. But we have to talk about the EI no, honorable. No, no, I am saying that... I, I get you if you... I'm say saying that, that all such attempts are unlawful. That is what I'm saying. So, for me, let the status quo anti remain. That it is a forest land. Simple. And let's... Uh, if there will be an improvement of, of, of that, uh, giving us... Uh, uh, additional, additional uh, uh, purpose or additional advantage as a forest, so will it be. But for us to deviate from that purpose and say that because I have compassion for Apiakubi, let me give Apiakubi one acre of that land, I think that we will be sidestepping beyond the law because the law says that upon acquisition, it stays, it stays uh, public land and for public use. So for me, all the bruhaha about how much land, uh, what kind of land use, if the land use is inconsistent with the purpose for which it is acquired, I disagree with it and it's unlawful. And I start from beginning to end, not to treat the end as unlawful and treat the beginning as lawful. All of them, the chain. In fact, uh, if country Ghana, we want to, because this EI is not sustainable. Like you we were saying, my, country, my hometown, Agogo, we also have ceded land to the government. So we also start on compassionate grounds. Give us also back. But do you think that we also don't need the land for agriculture? We do. But if we trigger this, then everybody else is coming. And the whole concept of creating public land will be in jeopardy. All right. Let me bring in Dr. Ja now. So, uh, Dr. Ja, you've, you've heard... Um, Honorable Inusa Fuseini, interesting position taken by the Honorable Apia Kubi. But the truth of the matter is there is an EI. We don't get a sense that it's going to be reversed or rescinded. There are calls for that. The minority in parliament um, are demanding that an, uh, an NGO called the Environmental Action Group, uh, led by their convener, Mrs. Va. What do you see looking ahead? Oh, um, thank you very much. Um, I've listened to the to the Honorable Fusini and uh, Honorable Apiakubi, and I think that um, the latter comments by Honorable Apiakubi are spot on. Um, I preface my earlier comments by stating that the, these lands remain public lands at all times. And for that reason, the public purpose has not abated the public purpose, as I explained earlier on, and as uh, um, Honorable Fuseni spoke on earlier, was for research, for recreation, and for ecological purposes. And for that matter, at this very moment that our craft finds itself in, in, the, in the wake of climate change, in the wake of changing uh, global um, environmental conditions, it, it's, it's strange that we would take such a decision to cut off um, nearly 40 plus percent of of the forest um, at the very i mean at the very least if you're not adding on to um, new forests in accra and um, looking at the growing population um, of accra at least we should be protecting what we have and so it brings to to the fore serious ecological concerns um i i would have wished that the the ministry for lands and and the forestry commission would have provided the public with um, biodiversity assessment reports on, on the, the nature of forest loss that we are going to suffer, the kinds of species as risk that are presently going to be affected. These kinds of questions have not been answered in any way um, by, the, by the press conference, neither have they been, is there any plan to mitigate that? Just um, a blanket statement about um, the intention to protect the ecology is not enough. We know, at least from our recent history, the rezoning of the, um, the lands around the motorway and the eventual uses that we've put those lands to. And so we will, not shoot, we would, we would be shooting ourselves in the foot by assuming that um, the 
the best intentions of, of, of the minister as he puts it in his statement that he concludes by saying um, they, they suggested to the president in, the, in what he calls the letter to motivate the discretion of the president that we want to create a park that looks like Central Park or Hyde Park in London. Those are not sufficient statements to convince anyone that the public character of those lands will remain the way they are. If anything at all, what the EI144 suggests to us is that the character of the declassified lands would enter into uses other than ecological uses. That is for sure in the EI144 as we see it. So it, it brings to, to the fore critical questions to be answered, especially in the context of ecological protection, climate change, sustainability. And that's why I was asking whether uh, the media or environmental NGOs have cited or have requested any biodiversity assessment report to support the declassification of this uh, of these of this part of the forest and its implications on the total health of that ecological zone we should not see a forest as just a, a small part of it of, of of the forest but to see the whole ecosystem as it borders on those places that are supposedly declassified and as i said earlier on the description as peripheral zones is actually mischievous and it does not support the understanding of buffers that go with uh, the creation of forest zones. So we need to take a second look at that. And uh, it also brings other critical questions of how we're going to manage other forests as uh, Honorable Apia could be raised um, in, his, in his concluding remarks. So these are some of the questions that we need to pay particular attention to going forward. All right. Let me come to uh, Mr. Opong. What next for, you know, a coalition of... Um, NGOs in the environment, will you file a petition? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, there are concerns that as a country, this would not be the first time we've seen public lands spirited away under our very noses. So I guess that if really there's a view that this needs to be tackled, what are some of the next steps members may be considering? Okay, thank you very much. But before I come to the next step, let, let me address this issue, okay. whether Achimota Forest has been sold or not. Okay. For me, the bottom line is, well, yeah, it's, it's true, it will be factual that government is not selling the land. But if government disclassify that portion of land and give it to the old family, by all means, they will sell it. So whether it's government selling it or old family selling it, a portion of Achimota Forest will be sold. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Thank it you. doesn't. Oh, you hold on. on a no, so, so it doesn't matter who who is doing the sale. Once that that, that portion is being declassified, by all means, the family will give it to private investors for them to to to, to, to use it. You want you he wanted to just raise something. No, no, on that. I'm, I'm saying whether a grant we are making a grant and the law prohibits a grant. So whether to your family or to anybody, there is a prohibition that you cannot divest any part thereof as per the schedule. Uh, uh, because of the acquisition and because of this classification as public land. So uh, it's not selling, as he's saying. And he thinks that it is only family alone that can sell. But any attempt to divest any part uh, will constitute, in literal terms, selling. Because if we give to a whole family even for free, we can give a gift. It's still a grant. So it's still a, a subtraction from the whole. So uh, don't separate uh, the two types of grants. They are the same. If the, you are losing part of that land. And if you lose it, uh, you may give it for free in the, uh, uh, or for pecuniary interest. But the fact of the matter is that it is public land which is not available to be divested to anybody for any interest different from that for which it was acquired. Okay, I'll come back to you on that. Yes, you, uh, okay. you, you said you so, also had another point you wanted to raise. Yes. No, no, so, so now in terms of strategy, what civil society... Mm. Uh, or you don't want to tell us in case government comes to, to block you. In no, no, so I, I can get... <laughs> I, I'm not going to details what, what are the plans are. But what I know for sure is, I think around Thursday, we, we, we sent letters to the ministry and, and last commission demanding for some list of information. 
it, it, does it include the biodiversity exactly. assessment that Dr. Uh, Jha uh, Exactly. Uh, and I mentioned. think we're also looking at the, the, the committee that made the recommendation, what was the basis of, of, of those, those, those uh, recommendations. And there are a lot of information that we are looking for. Once that we have a set of those information, then we will advise ourselves the, what, what we need to do. So you want the ministry to throw sunshine on how they got to this point, how it is that from an initial 118 acres that had been previously agreed, we are at what, um, almost what, 300, more than 300 it's acres, right. almost double. You want more information about that? As, as, as but, how, are you, but do you plan to speak to the old family at all to find out what you know, their motivation is? Not, not so, so for us, we haven't thought about speaking to them. As, as, as a citizen, we have given that mandate to, to, to state institutions to manage our, our, our public resources for us. So if we have an issue, the, the person that we need to first talk to is the person we have given the mandate to protect our interest. It's when we get information from people we have given the mandate to protect our interest, there is think that there are gaps that we need to fill it from the Owus family. Then I think we, we, we will do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Honorable Apia Kubi, yes, I know you've I'm said, I know you've, I know you've raised this issue yes. about, uh, before you, mm. the point you want to mm. make. The point is, the minister has indicated at his press conference because a similar question was asked about why now. He indicated that people had already have registration documents. The old family already had registered documents from the previous committee, whatever work had been done. They went and registered. People have the lands in there already. So this idea that you cannot divest because it's a public land and all that, that that first step has already But have you ever thought of valuable document before? Pardon me? Voidable, Voidable document. documents. Voidable transactions. If any transaction is contrary to law, it is voidable. So I'm saying that I'm not talking about figures. Let's go to 19 something, 118 or something. That which is unlawful is always unlawful. So uh, is it the case that all family they had any right to, to part of the land? If the answer is no, uh, the issue of Nemo that could don't have it comes in. Uh, who, who gave it? If the uh, land is vested in the president uh, uh, for and on behalf of the people of Ghana, it is only in fiduciary capacity that the land is vested. So if I'm a trustee uh, and I have your trust property, do I have a right to divest it as a trustee? Uh, if the purpose is given, and I go contrary to that purpose, for me, for once, let us in Ghana say that law must work. Mm -hmm. And therefore, all those purported transactions, can we bring them all to a hold and say, let's go to zero and say that we have a, a public land uh, acquired for public interest and public interest subsists, and the, there is no failure of that public interest. Should the president rescind the EI? I think so. And the purported acquisitions and the nullification of all such transactions purportedly made between one family and the other, or even the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the lands commission and whoever. You see, because the purpose has not been defeated. In all case law that we have, it is only where the purpose of acquisition is defeated that we look at um, uh, conditional rights. But the purpose has not been defeated. So why, and even in the case of uh, Tete Churu, it said that it is not the specific purpose upon which the acquisition was made. But if subsequent purpose is still in public interest, then the rights continue to be subsumed. And again, uh, all these case laws are happening post-1992 constitution. And we are talking of 1927, 19 something something. So can we, you say that the 1992 constitution which says that failure of acquisition uh, it, it brings conditional rights, can we say that it is in effect? Uh, Tetekuru has said that uh, 1992 constitution is not in effect in respect of transactions before 1992 constitution. It is not only um, uh, Tetekuru, uh, Ellis and Co., Ellis, uh, uh, Ellis Family versus Attorney General also says that 
Because the Ellis family, the law was created, PNDC law was created in November of um, 1991, 1992, November of 1992. But the, uh, the constitution came into effect in, on the 7th December of 1993. Even there, the Supreme Court says that the uh, law was created before the constitution and the constitution will not have a respective application, for which reason uh, the constitution will not affect that law created in November of 1992. Uh, where are we? Yes, your thoughts. Uh, you wanted to say something yeah, initially yeah. So, before so, I uh, go back to Dr. Ja. So, so I think Honorable made a point that I think we need to re-emphasize. So that argument by the minister that uh, because some portion of the land have already been leased, that's why they need there to... There are registrations yeah. and all that. You see, there's a, a, a reason why, if you even read the minister's statement very well, there's a reason why even when those people went in for the document, they were still not able to develop the site. Because Lands Commission realized it was illegal. Because you cannot erect structures in forest reserves. So basically, you can have... What they have is a paper which is not void, like a paper which does not exist. So or, or cannot work. For cannot them. work. That exactly. So what the president seeks to do, the EI seeks to do, was to make that document valid. Without that EI, that document that is not valid. So you cannot say so that argument that because they already have valid that document, that's why we are doing the EI. Basically, the EI first is rather validating that document that they have. So do you also feed into the suspicions of many who believe that this is just another? way through the back door for public senior public officials to benefit from what is the last tract of pristine forest land that we have I because at the end of the day let us not people don't want to live like me in a shong man <laughs> and spend uh, an hour and a half and two coming into town let's not even talk about uh, people's perceptions no we let's, must let, let, no, no, please, 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 we must wait, wait a minute, because let me, let me there learn. are unfortunate examples let's, let's and, and i just i don't want that, to sound like i'm targeting anyone no, no, no. but the truth is from 2006 to 2007 that was the height of the dispute among the guns over land okay, well, let, we were let, fighting if you and me, worrying over that one only you, to realize that cantonments lands and all those if, other lands if were you, gone if you allowed me what i'm saying is that let us not even spend energy on people's uh, perceptions. But let's look at the facts in the law as it uh, pertains now. Perception what, gives what, you some uh, insights, sir. And, and what, what, what I'm saying is that the EI is only targeting land use. It's not targeting title. And what I'm saying is that if you don't have title, land use doesn't matter because land use comes after title. So the, the EI is saying that convert the uh, the forest use into commercial use, that's all. The summary of the EI is affecting the land use. But what I'm saying is that then the more that concept comes in, you must have the land before thinking of the use. And I'm saying that uh, if we situate the law and the facts as at um, Achimota Forest, the land is not there for anybody to use by the law. So if we attempt to breach that law and give the land, then we will be confronted with this issue of land use for which people are making attempts to correct so that the land use could be consistent with the planning of uh, the beneficiaries of the grant. And I'm saying I'm attacking even the grant. So we haven't even got into land use to even talk about it. Yeah. So I would su suggest and advise that let's shelve the land use matter cry, and deal with do we have a right to grant do they have a right to assess that uh, property before we even think of land use? All right, Dr. Ja, let me come back to you because um, there is the view that this has already been decided. Do you have any ideas about how to overturn it? The specific document rights under it by command of the president. How can we uncommand the, the president to, to change this if he would be so uh, willing? Right. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Jifa. Um, I think the sh shorter answer is that it is possible to overturn the command, but before we get there, we need to take a more critical look at the the decision that has been made vis-a-vis uh, -vis the power of the president to make that decision. I, I think that we need to understand that when we look at Article 257 of the Constitution, which talks about public lands, 
broadly. It places that power on the president, which is only exercised um, for, the, for the benefit of, of the Ghanaian uh, community, Ghanaian society, and of citizens of Ghana. And if that is the case, when the decision is made or when the president decides to exercise his discretion under the Forest Act to declassify the Ashimoto Forest, at the very least, we need to see evidence of that level of public consultation that should go with such a decision-making process. I think that there are very many fundamental questions that are yet to be answered at this moment. The exercise of that discretion under the Forest Act um, is not one that can be made lightly. Um, it's one that has to be made in conjunction with the exercise of discretionary powers under the Constitution. So we need to be able to flag that uh, for, for review. Um, the second thing that we need to take a look at is that it is possible that um, Ghanaians in exercise of uh, their right to protect the, the public interest can proceed to court um, private individuals, uh, um, traditional rulers, um, environmental and natural resource NGOs, or any other uh, private citizen who is minded uh, can move in that direction. Um, we should also look at the, the conduct of the, of the president because they exercise that discretion in this year 144 vis-a-vis -vis his, um, his obligations internationally and locally and Ghana's own obligations internationally and locally, his own role at the international level, his involvement in the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals uh, as, um, as the co-chair of the UN SDGs Advocate Platform. Uh, these are all critical questions that must be raised in regard to the exercise of this discretion. Um, more importantly is the question that has not been answered, that as of now, the public character of the Ashimota forest, that is the lands that have been declassified, have not changed. Uh, like um, Honorable Apia Kubi mentioned earlier on, in the case of the uh, Kobichu case, the Supreme Court went ahead to say that even where the so-called original purpose, public purpose had changed, if it's still um, evident that there's a public element involved, then the rights in there are not automatically um, revived. So at no point in time does this EI tell us that the public character of the Ashimoto forest land has changed. And, and for that matter, we, there, sh there should be no reason for us to, to declassify that. And also, if the argument is that people have already acquired title, title and quote, which is actually defective or it's non-existent because the public character of those lands have not changed, then we cannot be seen to actually regularize private interest that is irregular only by giving up what is for the benefit of the public. I think that these are critical questions that anybody who wants to take up this in, in, in a law court or in other and platforms should, should pay attention to. Mm. Now, um, uh, then... Dr. Jai, I just want to raise with you, you talk about private interests. There's a, a certain perception, and I have been going through some of our messages, and some of it carried, that this is just a sly way for public officials to seek to uh, benefit mm -hmm. from the last pristine tract of land that we have. Honorable Apiakubi says he is targeting the original grant. He is targeting uh, the, the, the award. For him, we should deal with that and forget for the moment about land use because it's only from that that land use would be justified or approved. What are your thoughts about that? Um, thank you. I, to an extent, I agree with his, 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 his concerns that we need to go to the root. Uh, but then, again, I recall that he made that very important point himself when he said that what the declassification seeks to do, I mean, in very plain language, is to turn part of the forest into a commercial uh, interest. Now, commercial here would also accommodate, in essence, private interest. So um, whether we address it immediately or we, we wait till it gets further, those concerns will definitely come up. In, in any case, if we look at the history, at least our more recent history, and how we rezone lands, and we use the examples of the, uh, the Achimota, uh, um, the Akramoto, Tamamoto Way uh, rezoning process in 2006-2007, which the Supreme Court itself referred to in a couple of judgments, we know that 
the the end game or seemingly the end game has always been private interest howsoever the process starts so while that may not be the immediate question to be i have to be addressed in the longer term that question would arise let me read some text messages and uh, whatsapp messages that have come uh, before uh, us this one says it's just a grand uh, design by politicians uh, to loot and grab public lands hiding behind some families they are always exploiting loopholes in the system twisting the laws to advantage just to legitimize uh, illegalities uh, this one um, says good morning the ministry of land and natural resources needs to immediately revise the advice they provided that allowed for the declassification of uh, the achimota forest assuming they give the land to the family owners now and the next day another family rises up to reclaim uh, their forefathers lands meaning the state is going to lose forest resources which have a purpose to serve the country and the lives of citizens this one says i'm disappointed and his name is power this one has no name it says jifa in the uh former president kufour mills and mahama eras this same achimota forest issue came up without much uproar i think the difference is there is an enormous mistrust by the people of Ghana for this current president and his administration. And it reflected in the passage of the E-Levy and they need to work on restoring the citizens' trust. Uh, Theodore from Pando writes, it's quite surprising that those who are required to protect the lives of citizens end up taking actions that don't help the country and begging the law enforcers to allow due process to prevail in the matter of Nkranza so that people can live a peaceful and comfortable life. Thank you very much for some of your messages. Uh, you can send us more to our WhatsApp line and to our Twitter and Facebook pages. Uh, let me turn to the Honorable Apiakubi. You were, you were scoffing at people's perception. It's not me. It's the text messages. And so, but you, you see, see, that is my, when, when that is my issue sometimes us, with politicians. Yes, I, I you know. Put the person one, puts all of you into one, one boat. Like that. that seems unfair. So, the, the, but you <laughs> see, that is the, the difficulty of the current. And how can, and, and I think it goes to the very heart of the current administration and issues when they are raised, they say they are listening government and all these things, but yes. yet the actions uh, do not demonstrate No, no, no. I'm hopeful that, that we all will listen. But I, I, I don't like the, the part when you point to the present government. I don't like that because my submission has not been targeted at any particular oh, no, that's regime. that's someone's message. Uh, 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 and uh, what I'm also about not, when I said a perception. Yes, what mm -hmm. I'm also not comfortable is when you put us all into one <laughs> pot and say that, politicians. Who am I? I'm one of them. But I am the same person advocating for the opposite. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, spare us some, the, the, some the, dignity. The public should and, give you, uh, you, catch see, you some slack. Yes, <laughs> and say that. And not all of us believe in that. Indeed, uh, some of us, uh, by our advocacy, by our conduct, by our preaching, we appear, if you don't even believe, we appear to be uh, championing the public interest. You see, so when you put us all in a box like that, you attempt to um, bring us by force into that box where we are not. So please, at least say some and, and save some of us. <laughs> <All right. we> are, <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a growing perception that uh, all politicians are some, some, like breed, of, like some breed of animals. We are not all the same animals. At least we have dogs and we have uh, cats. <laughs> and tigers so, and lions. <laughs> so, so at least the categorization is important. Mm. Uh, but right. be it as it is yeah. now, uh, let us all think Ghana. It's important that it is not me or you or anybody else. But is it good for all of us to lose our forest cover? And indeed, uh, you were coming to one point that uh, you should conserve. I will not even preach conservation. I will preach creation, addition, addition. So our focus is always on conservation. And therefore, uh, Forestry Commission, their focus is all on conver con conserving public lands or forest. But the forests are getting depleted by the day. So it brings us the realization that conservation has not succeeded. And therefore, let's see, look at creation, 
adding to it. And here we go. I read something from uh, Brazil, uh, their forestry concept. Brazil forest products, uh, cocoa is classified as forest product. Coffee is classified as forest products in Brazil. I did some research. And in this case, uh, you go to my home country, the forest reserve is all teak. When you look at the economics of teak, it doesn't make sense going into teak production. Because when you plant a teak for 18 years, you harvest one and it's only 10 cities. When you grow cocoa, which is forest product in Brazil, and in one year you harvest, you will get not less than 500 cities a year. Projected that into 18 years. Is it not more profitable? And it gives us the biodiversity and also the forest cover. The same as the teak would do. If you cocoa does it better. So why is it that we are hurting ourselves by crafting a law and, and taking away cocoa from forest products and saying that you cannot grow cocoa in forest land? And meanwhile, it provides better opportunities than even the teak. So my concept now is that let's uh, amend the Forestry Act to include cocoa and coffee as the Brazilians have done. Therefore, increasing our productivity at the end of the year, every year, and also giving jobs to uh, uh, our boys and girls to go into cocoa and coffee production. And also on the international scale, on the international market, also increase our market share. But if we don't do that and continue with tick, 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 we are show, showing this interest. You go to Agogo and people, you give them tick seedlings to go and plant. They won't because it, there's no economic value. But if you give them uh, cocoa seedlings, they will grow and give us what we want as a country in terms of biodiversity and ecology. And then also give money into the pockets of those youthful people. Mm -hmm. So let's think we step outside the box and do what, is, what the other people have done and benefited from so that we can also compete uh, equitably on the international market. All right. Um, now, Mr. Pong, one of the criticisms I've also heard of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is that you declassify a forest reserve, but yet we are spending more than $12 million to plant trees. The Honorable Apia Kubi is looking at, you know, foresting in his, his comments. I'm just wondering, should we be spending this much foresting? Should we? No, so, so, so that's a genuine concern from, from people. How, how do you spend so much money to nurture seedlings, plant them, protect them, maintain them to mature, when you already have existing one which is mature than you are? cutting them down by declassification. So it doesn't make sense. So you are pumping in so much money to increase forest cover somewhere. But meanwhile, you are reducing the forest size in another area. In, 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 in forest, we call it net emission. So you, you reduce, you cut down forest somewhere and it emits carbon to the atmosphere. Then you plant somewhere and it absorb it. It doesn't make sense. So for us, we, we think, if you want, we want to improve our forest cover, let's maintain the old ones that we have. Let's improve the integrity whilst we are looking for other areas, especially even our urban towns. In Ghana here, I think Achimota is the only urban, the bigger urban forestry that we have. Why don't we look for other areas to, 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 to do urban, urban? And it's not in Ghana alone. When you go to other places like Kenya and other places, people are thinking about- no, If you go to home, home. They have a forest cover like yes, that. Yes, we have good be be forest cover in yes. But people are uh, attacking the rich. Uh, hey, that is where we have to go. They there are attacking the rich. So when you're on the highway mm. and you see those beautiful If you go on ridges, the hills and yes. you see how beautiful. So, so I wish that that is something yes, that would have to be, be tackled. Otherwise, very soon, the entire ridge will be cut down mm. and there will be hotels. Uh, and, and Doc, and that, uh, you that are in be. Canada. You are in um, uh, Toronto, I guess. And look at uh, the forest behind Driftwood Avenue. I lived there for some time in going to York University. Beautiful, yes. isn't it? Yes. It has yes. been there. Yes. We yes. want to destroy ours. Mm. Exactly. And, and in Driftwood, Driftwood Avenue, they are even expanding, aren't they? Yes. And they are growing even uh, plants inside even the forest. Driftwood. Yes. You can get a, a crantier there. Is that not correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. No, exactly. So, so we should be looking for 
other avenues to expand even the already existing urban forest that we have. And lucky for us, now there are a lot of innovative ways to even get funding or get revenue from urban, urban forest. Just recently, I think uh, World Bank even gave us some money, I think 50, if, if I'm right, 50 million dollars for, for carbon, carbon emission. We are doing some, we are doing some projects FIP project in the Western region. The idea is if you are able to conserve an area and those streets are able to absorb a carbon, they can create a carbon that cuckoo, is cuckoo, absorbed. Cuckoo. Yeah, the cocoa project. It's mm -hmm. a, you are able to calculate the carbon it has absorbed. Now you have Achimota Forest. Why don't you improve the integrity of Achimota Forest? Mm -hmm. Let it absorb the carbon. The trees are there. Then you go there and you take money out of it. And maybe the old family can get their royalties and other. We need to be innovative in, in our forest. So there are other management. ways to give something back to the old family. It doesn't mean that we must give the land back. Exactly. Exactly. Because Per, like I said, per the arrangement in forest management, if compensations are not paid and government is managing the forest for the people, when a, a revenue is accrued, royalties are paid to them. So if the current stage of Achimota Forest, they are not getting revenue, why don't we look for other innovative ways for that forest to, to generate revenue so that old family can get a sustainable way of getting revenue? Let's assume we give the land to them today. Then they sell the land. The next 10, 20 years, the money... They'll come back for more. They'll come back for more. But if you, you use, you, you improve the integrity and the forest reserve generates revenue, the next the 10 years, the 20 years, 30 years, 50 years generation will still be benefiting from, from, from such initiatives. All right. Let me take a final comment from uh, Dr. Ja. Any ideas about how we, we move forward on this matter? Um, thank you, Jifa. I, I think that I, I joined the, the other panelists, um, especially the comments by Honorable Pia Kubi, that the president should rescind the the EI-144. Um, it's not in the public interest, and there's been no other reason advanced to support the, the EI as it is right now. Um, the the points that he makes, uh, the others make about uh, reforestation is, is spot on. Um, we, we cannot be engaged in the Greening Ghana project, and then actively deforesting one of Ghana's natural forest zones in the city. That also suggests that we we, we are working in contradiction uh, in, in contradictory terms. Um, I think also that the 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 idea of carbon rights now, um, like Elvis was um, speaking about. Uh, are things that communities will begin to engage in in the modern sense where there can be some benefit sharing in terms of these new rights uh, that would emerge with the new uses of forests that may we may apply ourselves to so that is something that we can take a look at and that will require protecting the forest cover that we have now and adding more to it where we begin to see more community-based um, forest areas and uh, the, the third thing that i think that we should we look at is the to bring some pressure to be on the president in terms of Ghana's commitments um, at the international level uh, when it comes to climate change, when it comes to uh, our obligations under the Convention on Biodiversity, um, Bi Biological Diversity. These are critical uh, documents and treaties that we have signed on to, that we have obligations to obey and to comply with. Um, we cannot be seen to be doing exactly the opposite of those um, obligations that we've signed, out, signed on to. I also think that one critical thing that we are not addressing, it seems that we lack a, a forest um, re practice regulation of a sort where we should take a second look at how planning foresters, um, how other professionals engage in the forestry sector are able to constitute themselves into a regulated um, practice, um, properly so-called, just like we see for doctors, lawyers, engineers, and others, that can bring in diversity of opinion. As it is right now, it seems that the, the, the carrying force of the discussion is what the Forestry Commission is saying. But if we have a regulatory regulated practice, then the likelihood that we have diversity in opinion within the professional body in itself would help us to grow the discussion even further. As it is right now, it seems that um, what the Forestry Commission or what the Ministry says um, is the standard voice that we should be listening to. But if we encourage that level of 
engagement at the, as a regulated practice, it will bring diversity of opinion. I, I think also that when, when, we, when we step away from this discussion, the media also needs to be able to ask some critical questions, as I mentioned earlier on. For example, where are the biodiversity assessment reports for the declassified places in the Ashmolta Forest? Why are we not asking those kinds of questions? In the absence of those questions, it will be difficult for us to carry the discussion forward. You cannot declassify nearly 200 acres of land, natural forest, and not think about the ecological implications and not show as your mitigation plans and not show as your relocation plans and not show as the species as risk plans. All of these are critical components of what we should be seeing in this process. And once these questions cannot be answered, then obviously the decision to declassify the forest will, will fall into, into a dark place and will bring us back to the point where we need to look ourselves in the face and say that the public character of these lands remain as they are and they should be protected. They are not up for other reasons, reasons other than the public interest. These are the questions that I think that we should be uh, addressing. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jai. And uh, uh, Honorable Apiakubi, any final words from you? I will suggest that we should embark on a program of reforestation seriously. Uh, for me, I have already discounted this attempt to uh, divest parts of public lands and uh, consequential uh, effect of uh, the reclassification. I have already dismissed it from my opinion. Uh, and I want to suggest that going forward, let's look at reforestation. But re looking at reforestation also does not connote uh, keeping ourselves within the confines of um, the, 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 the box, what the Forestry Commission says. But what it requires is just a small amendment of the uh, Forestry Act to include also some economic uh, plants that also qualify for uh, the concept of uh, uh, afforestation and the concept of um, forest cover and the biodiversity. And I have suggested cocoa and um, what's the name? Coffee. coffee. Uh, there are people who may also suggest uh, maybe mangoes or oranges so that apart from the ecological benefits that we are getting from uh, the afforestation, we are also getting economic benefit. This way, we can motivate the youth into such areas, and that will also improve our employment situation. So it is uh, very bad when we confine ourselves to uh, pre previous concepts and stay in the box. Let's get out of the box, expand our horizon and also expand our opportunities. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Many thanks to you, uh, Mr. Pong, uh, spokesperson for the Coalition of Environmental NGOs. Many thanks to the Honorable Andy Apiakubi. Many thanks to Dr. Ja uh, joining us all the way from Canada. Much appreciated. And thanks to all of you for watching. For those of you who sent us WhatsApp, text, Twitter messages, Facebook messages, much appreciated. And my entire thanks to the production team and our, our cameramen here. Up next, of course, is Kids Arena. You've been watching Key Points live from TV3 and on 3FM 92.7. Enjoy the rest of your day and watch Kids Arena. Have a good day.